Okay. So we interrupt this program. Thanksgiving, part one, B, and then um, what I have marked as B will be C. So I'm going to read up to that point. I have had it. Okay. I've had it up to here. Just about. I need to de-stress. This is not cool. All right. We uh, work in Gainesville because that is where my practice is, but we're going to live in one of the smaller outlying towns like Archer, Newberry, or someplace similar. You know Anne's father was a physician too. When we were dating, I always thought her father was a little odd for keeping a small farm when he could have lived in a much more com- lived a much more comfortable life without it. He told me that the family had learned a hard lesson in the depression which his father had drilled into him constantly. He said so long as he didn't lose too much money, he was quite happy to keep the farm going, even if it meant having to hire a man to run it while he ran his practice. Now that I have children of my own, I begin to grasp what he was after in the way he raised his own children. I think I may just emulate at least some of that with my family. Heather looked up and said, Daddy, you're not going to buy a milk cow, are you? The table chuckled at this, and her father replied with a glint in his eye, Oh, I don't know, hon. I think milking is doing you some good. In fact, I haven't heard you say, I'm bored in months. Uh, where in the hell? Oh, there it is. I haven't heard you say I'm bored in months, even without 300 CDs and electronic game station big enough to run NASA and spending weekends at the mall. You've really blossomed since coming here. You should be proud of that. Heather blushed. Well, I guess I am, a little bit anyways. But you're still not going to buy a cow, are you? Her father laughed and said, no, probably not. We could probably work out a trade or something with the horns here for milk, but I don't think we really want to cope with three or more gallons of milk every day. I do think a bit of a garden, a few hens, and perhaps a beef or two in the pasture keeping the grass clipped would be within our capacity. We should be able to cope with that, though it might mean <clears throat> spending a little less time at the mall. His daughter stuck his tongue out at him and took a large fork full of sweet potatoes. Ed said, I think we'll be seeing quite a few folks getting the itch to move back to the land like the hippies did back in the 70s. We've let ourselves forget that food doesn't come from the grocery store and we've paid for it. These last few years, Ellie and I have been feeling our age a bit and slacking off on things that we used to do, like canning and whatnot. We haven't been hungry, but this last month or so, the Strickland diet has been getting a little monotonous. We didn't used to be like that. When I was coming up, we always bought in quantity, mainly because it was a lot cheaper that way and we couldn't afford to be coming home into town every week. Wasn't no paved road then anyways. We never thought anything of it because that's what everyone did. After the war, things began to change. When I got back from Korea, I bought Mama her first freezer. She still canned every year, but we got used to that convenience. Still didn't go to town every week. We didn't start doing that until the early 60s when they paved the road. Not the one out there, but the road from Archer into Gainesville. They didn't pave the road out there until the early 70s, but they did grade it. Slowly but surely, everyone got accustomed to being able to just go and fetch something when it ran out, and we stopped buying like we used to. Thank goodness Ellie had the summer garden already put away and we had plenty of beef and venison in the freezer. I'm not sure what my mama would have to say if I told her that we've run slap out of coffee and sugar in just three months, though. She bought her sugar by the barrel and green coffee beans by the sack and roasted them herself. Ellie chuckled and said, I remember the first time your mother asked me to roast the beans. She gave me her big old iron skillet and pointed at the bag of coffee beans. I burned those beans nearly black. She just shrugged it off, ground them up anyways. We'd never heard the word espresso back then, but that's sure what it looked like when she brewed it up. I think Ed was considering throwing me back after that one, but I made amends with my pancakes, which he said were better than what his mother made. Not in front of her, of course. Anne put down her glass and chimed in. Well, living in a college town, it was easy to fall into the fast food mentality. When I was growing up in Maine, my mom always kept a lot of food on hand. She was feeding five people, so she said it was just more efficient to buy that way. Of course, up there we have the advantage of having basements that stay cool, which makes keeping lots of food on hand much easier than it does down here, 
where no one has a basement and it's so hot for so much of the year. In Maine, you could keep stuff like potatoes, apples, squash, and the like all winter in a box in the cellar. Here, everything seems to rot so fast. You all have to can or freeze or dry a lot of stuff that we just kept in a wheelbarrow. It wasn't until after I'd married him that I realized how odd many people thought John was for keeping so much food in the house. Eventually, we just quit talking about it outside of the family. Everyone else wanted to live in an instant, just-in-time world where everything was easy and convenient. I do have to admit that keeping up with it all and trying to find places to store everything really got to be a drag at times. I sure miss having a basement. Our first addition on the house after we bought it was a full walk-in pantry, which is nearly as good. Robert said, it's funny how interest can skip a generation. No one in my generation has had an interest in farming or anything like what my father and his brothers did. I reckon that's because we grew up that way and no one wanted to stay down on the farm. Make a much better living in town and didn't have to work so hard to do it, too. Now, John here never really grew up on a farm at all, though he did spend summers at his grandfather's. He's always wanted a farm but couldn't figure out a way to make it pay, so he ended up working in town like the rest of us and doing a little homesteading on the side. Hobby farming, I guess you'd call it. Not a hobby anymore now when things get put... Not a hobby anymore, but when things get put back together, again, I expect most folks will go back to the way they were before the asteroid came. All right, good night. Finished it off.